How is it going, ladies and gentlemen? Sorry I'm getting this content out to you a day late. With games not happening this Thursday, I just pushed everything back a little bit. I also wanted to take some time away for what we witnessed over the weekend. Hope you guys had a safe and awesome New Year's, and let's kick off this one with a championship. If it's week 18 and you're still playing, that means you are fighting for a title. My job is to try to help you get the dub with everything on the line. I'm gonna give you all the information that you're going to need to do just that. I love to answer your questions, so make sure you drop those all down below. I will get back to you as soon as I can. And I usually give you a pretty detailed response trying to give you the whys behind the advice that I am giving you. Quick shout out to all of my current subscribers. Thank you guys so much for your support. I could not and would not be here without you. If you have not done so already, subscribe to the channel, join the RP fam. We would love to have you along for the ride. Make sure you crush the like button if you find yourself enjoying the content. And what do I have in today's video since I haven't got to that yet? It is the top 32 options at running back. I'm going to go over your ones, your twos, and give you some players to consider in your flexes as well. With that done, let's hop into week 18's running back rankings. The top spot is none other than Christian McCaffrey. He found himself the biggest backpack that he could put on, and he put every owner in it last week on his way to the overall RB2 finish against Vegas. CMC now has four top five finishes in his last five games, and he scored in five straight as well. He had over 100 total yards against the cards on just 14 touches back in week 11. That just about seems like the floor here for me. At two, it is Austin Eckler. He has had to work very hard to fend off CMC for that overall RB1 title on the season, and he succeeded in doing that in week 17 with an epic performance against the Rams. Pound for pound destroyed the Broncos the last time these two met up, and he's going to do the same here. Derrick Henry rounds out my top three. He is the only hope left for a Titans team that is falling apart at the seams. Now, after a week off, I expect close to 30 touches, if not more, from the King as he tries to carry Tennessee into the playoffs. While I'm not sure that he is successful at doing that, the volume is going to give him plenty of opportunities. Tier 2 starts with Josh Jacobs at 4. He was able to find a way into the top 10 for the first time in 3 games with 21 touches against San Francisco. There is a rushing title on the line here, so I think Jacobs shows up in a big way in a decent matchup. To round out my top 5, way up there is Aaron Jones. At home against Detroit, he saw the volume come back against the Vikings. He did plenty with it, racking up 111 yards on just 14 carries. Now, the split with A.J. Dillon is not ideal, but it is a necessary evil. I think Jones rips apart a Lions defense, allowing 6.6 .6 yards per carry over their last three. That is the most in the NFL. Kenneth Walker is next at 6. He's handled a massive workload with 52 touches in his last two games as Seattle continues to fight for their playoff lives. The Rams have given up 4 rushing scores and 5 yards per carry over their last three games. Both of those numbers are bottom 7 in the NFL, so Walker is primed to carry his owners one final time to end the season. At number seven and headlining tier number three, it is Najee Harris, who showed up just when owners needed him most, posting his second best finish of the season and first 100 yard performance against a stout Baltimore front seven. Harris now has six touchdowns in his last seven games. I think he takes advantage of a Browns defense, allowing 24 points per game to the position, sixth most in the NFL. In at number eight, it is Travis Etienne Jr. He paid off my top five ranking of him last week, finishing there on just 12 touches. Now he's not likely to find room on the ground here against Tennessee, but he's had 17 carries or more in three out of his last four, and his work in the passing game is increasing as well. I think ETM comes through with another top 10 finish. 
At nine, it is Joe Mixon, who will likely once again have to use that passing game work against Baltimore. The Ravens have slipped a bit against the run over their last three weeks, though. They allowed 4.3 yards per carry. Now, there does not seem to be a team capable of stopping this offense right now, so I am buying Mixon's touchdown upside once again. Tier four starts with Dalvin Cook, who has not shown up in two straight games, but this matchup is too good to pass up on. The Bears have allowed 6.1 yards per carry and eight rushing scores over their last three games, so if Dalvin sees plenty of work, he has top three upside. My concerns are that Alexander Madison sees plenty of opportunities instead, and the Vikings O-line is also ravaged by injury, so there is a decent amount of risk. Nick Chubb is my 11th ranked back. He gets Pittsburgh on the road. He continued his nosedive to end the season. He was finally able to climb back into the top 20 though for the first time in over a month. I think the odds are stacked against him once again. Pittsburgh has not allowed a rushing score in three straight games and they're surrendering just 3.2 yards per carry in that span. Now Chubb's touches are going to help keep owners afloat here, but you are paying for the floor as opposed to buying a ceiling. Cam Akers is the last RB1 that I have in week 18. He has become the unlikely fantasy playoff hero that few saw coming. Now, if you did add him about a month and a half ago, when I suggested it, he has done you some good and paid off in a big way. He recorded 60 yards and a pair of scores back in week 13 against this very Seattle squad, and he could do even more damage with all the volume he's been seeing as of late. My lucky number 13 is Jarek McKinnon. He travels to Vegas to take on the Raiders and has probably been one of the most touchdown dependent players in fantasy football but he has seven of them in his last four games so what are you gonna do bench the guy didn't think so Vegas gives up top five numbers to the position on the season, so there is a really good chance that McKinnon finds the end zone for the sixth straight week. Alvin Kamara is in at 14 as my next man up. He continues to see his upside capped by the team's refusal to use him at the goal line, but the volume has been there over the last three weeks, and he's going to need it against a Panthers defense that's allowing just 3.1 yards per carry over their last three. That is second best in the NFL. Now, they they have allowed four rushing scores in that span, so there is some hope that Alvin can score for just his third game this season. In at 15, it is Miles Sanders, who has given owners little reason to trust him over the last three weeks. But a Jalen Hurts return certainly makes things easier, as does this matchup with New York. The Giants have absolutely nothing to play for here, and they've also allowed 5.3 yards per carry on the season, second worst in the NFL. That is a recipe for a big bounce back day from Sanders, who could showcase that epic upside we saw back from weeks 12 to 14. To tier six, Ramondre Stevenson leads it off. He dropped significantly in my rankings after being out rushed by Damian Harris last week. Stevenson is probably more banged up than Bill Belichick is leading on, but we know that the upside for him is there. I do not see that happening against the Bills, but the floor is enough for him to warrant RB2 status. Zeke Elliott is my 17th ranked back. He performed as expected against Tennessee, rushing 19 times for 37 yards. Now for context, Malik Davis, the backup to the backup had 10 carries for 39 yards. As usual though, Zeke found a way to fall into the end zone for the ninth straight game. His efficiency is garbage and Tony Pollard is probably back here, but Elliott is also most likely going to hit pay dirt again. Speak of the devil, Tony Pollard is up next at 18. He should be back this week after missing week 17 with a hip injury and he pulls Washington who allows five yards per carry over their last three games, seventh highest in the NFL. Pollard has not dropped outside of the top 22 since back in week 12, so you can feel confident rolling him out there should he be cleared. In at 19 is Brian Robinson Jr., who could not overcome a brutal Carson Wentz game, so although he saw an incredible 25 opportunities, he was able to turn them into just 87 scoreless yards. Against a tough defense, he could fall if Antonio Gibson is back in the fold. But either way, you are buying a solid floor that will not provide much of a ceiling. 
Tier 7, and rounding out my top 20 starts with Isaiah Pacheco. He finally broke his three-game scoreless streak, but the nine carries that he had were his lowest since back in week number nine. I am not worried though. The touches will come back here because Kansas City should be in control for much of this game, and Pacheco has been a top 21 finisher in four out of his last six. James Conner is next at 21. He did everything but score against the Falcons, racking up 110 total yards on 19 touches. I'm gonna be banking on the volume here against San Francisco. They've dominated the run all year, allowing a league best 3.4 yards per carry. In at number 22, it is Jamal Williams, who emerged from the past three weeks of nothingness. To dismantle the Bears, he rumbled for 144 yards on 22 carries, and he scored as the week's RB4. If Detroit is able to keep this close and he sees 20 or more touches, he has top 10 upside, but both of those are very big ifs. 23 is David Montgomery. He's at home against Minnesota. He got absolutely massacred by the game script against Detroit. He handled just nine touches for 36 total yards. Minnesota has given up top 10 numbers to backs on the season, so the matchup is ripe. But with Khalil Herbert coming back and splitting touches, Monty is more risky than owners would like. My last RB2 in week 18 and headlining tier number eight is Tyler Algier. He is a back end RB2 who has outperformed that ranking in three straight games with finishes of RB7, 12, and 11. His lack of passing game usage, I think hurts him against this Buck squad. They've allowed just a single rushing score and 3.5 yards per carry over their last three. Atlanta's RB1 should be fine, but do not expect another top 12 finish here. To round out my top 25, it is AJ Dillon. He's now scored in five straight games for the pack, and I expect him to hit Pater once again against the Lions. He's flashed plenty of upside over the last month, and he's also averaging 13 carries per in his last four, so Dillon is a solid bet to return value. DeAndre Swift is next at 26. He handled 15 touches for the first time since back in week 13. That gives me some hope that at least for the final game of the season, he can be treated like an actual starting NFL running back. Green Bay has not stopped the run all season long, so a decent workload from Swifty will mean production. Now, does he get it? I am not so sure, but he is worth the gamble at this ranking. At 27, it is Zach Moss. He is my favorite dart throw option at the position in week 18. He's taken a solid hold of that RB1 job with Jonathan Taylor out. He's carried the ball 51 times over his last three games. A big workload against the Texans is extremely inviting. Houston has surrendered an average of 140 rushing yards and a league high 28.7 fantasy points per game. Moving on to 28, it is Latavius Murray. He could surprise against the Chargers if the Broncos are able to stay in it like they did last week against the Chiefs. No one allows more yards per carry on the season than LA. They give up over 23 points per game to the position as well. And Murray is the unquestioned RB1 in Denver. So if you are shooting for the moon in your flex, Latavius fits the bill. My ninth and final tier starts with Raheem Mostert. He gets the Jets at home. He earns a spot because of his usage in the passing game against the Patriots last week. After seeing no more than five targets in any game on the season, he had eight balls thrown his way in week 17. He will need that work once again against a tough Jets front, but whoever ends up playing quarterback for Miami is likely going to dump it off plenty. To round out my top 30, it is J.K. Dobbins. He saw plenty of volume against the Steelers, and he used the 17 touches to compile 93 scoreless yards. Against a top five rushing defense in Cincy, and likely once again without Lamar Jackson, I do not see much upside here, so you hope for a score, but you lean on the touches. My last two running backs, both come from Tampa Bay. It is Rashad White and Leonard Fournette. I think each of these guys sees a decent amount of work in a meaningless game against the Falcons. I do not think that the Bucks air it out much here with nothing on the line, but the split here means that little upside is there for either of them. There is also the chance that one or even both of them get benched at any time, so we know there's plenty of risk. A couple of players that just missed the cut include Devin Singletary, Saquon 
Saquon Barkley, who I do not believe plays against Philadelphia. Alexander Madison, and depending on what happens with Minnesota, he could hit big. Zonovan Knight traveling to Miami. And finally, Cordero Patterson against Tampa Bay. And that is all I got for you guys for Week 18's running back rankings. Really hope you enjoyed the content and that you learned something. Let me know what you thought and drop any questions, any comments that you might have down below. I love to get back to you guys and help you out. Make sure you crush the like button if you enjoyed the content and please consider subscribing to the channel as well. We're constantly pushing towards our goal of 1,000 subscribers. If you have not done it yet, you can be a part of that. This is Relentless Press. I am your host, Abraham Opaz, and I will see you next time.